from a little hometown whose little heart was broken. On March 31st, 1999 was when Kathy and I first were made aware that Garrett had a serious heart problem. Uh, the doctor explained to us that the left side of Garrett's heart did not develop in the womb and that his chance of survival was, was next to nothing. Garrett's born in Aurora, Colorado, and uh, that was, a, it was an incredible day. Yeah, it was hard for me to even want him to be born because I wanted to keep him in my belly until he was able to get a donor. You know, I wasn't able to hold him. It was a heck of a way to enter the world. And he started squalling and I stayed there with him and I started something then. When that first tear rolled down his cheek, I took that tear and tear and I put it on mine. I can't carry his pain, but guess kind of symbolically I was trying to help him carry his tears. He was in into his seventh month of waiting. Our transplant coordinator said it's a go and we were just Lord. When Garrett went into surgery, I just sat down and started writing him a lullaby. Uh, it's called the Littlest Cowboy Lullaby. And it just basically tells the story of a, of a little boy who's, who's born and he's scared and, you know, mommy rocks him and says, baby, don't cry. The pain would go away. He could get on his pony and just rise. Saddle up pony out beneath those pale moonbeams. Tonight's a night to ride your pony in the littlest cowboy dreams. Just watching him grow up, he just had so much energy and he'd play rodeo, he'd play baseball, and no one even can tell that he. No. He had a transplant and he said he was sick because he just looked like a normal kid. That heart lasted uh, eight years and then he'd still be active running around and he'd just fall on the couch once in a while and say, Mommy, my arm hurts. That's when I started getting scared and taking him into his pediatrician. She just did an enzyme blood test and it detected a heart problem. It's been hard on me seeing him go into the emergency and see all these wires on him. And when he always has an arm ache on his heart side, we're always, I'm always worried about him. I, I don't know how much Jessie's done for me. She's the best, one of the best things that would ever happen in my life. Out of all my friends, she's at the top because no one can take care of me more like she can. They went in, they did the cath, they said he's dying. So they put a stent in him, came out, and that boy woke up and he suddenly was happy. And I was like, geez, he's jumping up and clicking his heels and he thinks the world is great. We're the only ones that know that he's got to have another heart. At that point in his life, he'd had 16 or 17 surgical procedures. He deserved a couple of days just to be a, a little boy. On March 2nd, 2008, my pager goes off. And it's my wife saying, JD, you need to get up here. We've got a heart. And now's the time that we had to tell him. And I remember sitting him on the, sitting him on the staircase in there and telling him, said, hey, guess what, buddy? Great news. You're getting a new heart. Your old one was kind of sick, and, and we ordered a new one, and it's here. He got scared immediately, and, but you know what? He, he cowboyed up, and that was always kind of a that was always kind of our thing. I'd, when he'd go in for a cath or a procedure, carry me in, he'd look up, and he'd go, cowboy up, right, Daddy? Cowboy up. I got a call from my sister, because they were all out in the waiting room. She said, the donor family is here. You know, I mean, what are, what are the chances that in the same hospital, in the same way, in the same two families are praying to the same God to save their children? And one prayer is answered with a yes. One prayer is answered with a no. 
if I had the chance to say something to Darren, I would say giving me this new heart and filling my life with power, I just can't thank you enough. You know, first time, here's this baby that we'd always, we'd always wanted. This time, I'm a daddy, and this is my friend. And I'm kissing my boy on the cheek and saying I love you, and doing everything I can to swallow anything that shows fear. He is now 10 and playing basketball and baseball and he antagonizes his sister and aggravates his mother and you can't keep him still we've been given a gift twice and if there was anything about this journey that could help another child that could help another family that could raise awareness that could raise a dollar to help one doctor have one more minute of research to be one step closer to a cure for heart disease. And that's what it's about. I feel normal, but I feel very lucky. Um, I'd really like to be a, um, a basketball player or a football player, or if mom help, lets me bull rider. Close your eyes and start your dream. I'll be right here softly singing The littlest cow